God, who is in control of our life, will allow us and approve us to do this or such a thing. But we are not robots to ask God every single thing that we must do in our daily life. Of course, God gave us His Word as an track to walk with Him. And God gave us His Word, the Bible, to guide us in the way of His will. But we make decisions every day of our life, every single minion, and we don't are bothering God for every step that we do in our life. I have a family with two kids, and my kids, they are already growing off to make decisions, to go this way or that way, this room or that room, to do this activity or that activity. They don't ask me what they have to do. Actually, my first son, he have a bad habit to ask everything before he decided to, to do for his own life. And sometimes it gets irritating. Like, for example, he say, Dad, can I wear this jacket or that sweater? I say, it's up to you. I say, but what do you like? Yeah, even though I say I like the jacket, I don't want to manipulate my son's decision for his life to affect his personality. God gave us personality. And he wants us to develop this personality according to the image that he created us. Of course, he created us in the image of his likeness, that we can be like God, merciful, judge, loving, and pure. But our personality belongs to us. When we depart from this world to eternity, we will carry this personality with us into heaven. Some people will do like, oh, I don't want to be in heaven like this. Yes, nobody wants to be in heaven in the way we are. But the promise of God is that we will transform it into the image of Christ and we'll be like Jesus. That's his promise. But until that day happens, we are renewing every day our soul with the water and the bread of God to guide us to be more than him and to make decisions like Jesus did when he was in planet Earth. So, don't get confused that God is not a person who wants to manipulate your life in every decision so you cannot think about tomorrow, you cannot think about what you have to do or, or eat or, 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 do, or, or dream because God has to be obeyed. That's not God's will. But God's will for us is to, yes, to glorify His name and to know that what are these frame that He created us for us to follow Him and honor Him in our daily life. So, if you decided to buy a car this year, 2018, that's your choice. God won't uh, punish you or bless you because of that. But yeah, some people, they ask for, for cars. There's a, a missionary in Mexico that he's asking for a track, 4x4 four four track, because he wants to go to, to preach the gospel to the villages in Mexico. So, that's one prayer point. And church of the, his members and, and those who know his and friends are praying for God, supply for this missionary who needs in Mexico this 4x4 four four track. So that's God's will to lead someone to support this missionary. But if you are not in that kind of position and you want to buy a new car, well, you, you can pray to God. But I'm, I'm sure that God won't answer you in the Bible to say, yes, you must buy this car or not. God has a plan for everyone. And it's our obligation to know his plan. Because we don't know what we are doing here. And if we try to figure out what we are doing here without God's guidance and testimony, we're going to get lost, like many people get lost in their life. So, Jesus prayed like this, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is the Lord's prayer, so he taught us to pray in the same way. So this is a prayer for all Christians, right? So we do the same prayer and we say the same words, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that means that you wish to have the will of God be done in earth. And in, when we say in earth, including your life and my life. Amen? Now, if we are wishing God's will, we cannot compete our will with God's will. Amen? So, God's will versus my will. Jesus says, when you pray, you pray like this. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Then, we all agree that we want the will of God be done on this world, in our time. And the Apostle Paul tells us, as I said last week in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not come for any longer 
to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Right? So we have this calling from God to know and approve how good, how testy, how pleasing, how perfect this will is in our life. The Apostle Paul would say to the church in Ephesus, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand the Lord's will, or understand what the Lord will is. He said to the church in Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 17. So we have to be wise to receive wisdom by understanding what is the will of God. If you know what is the will of God, you will make right decisions. You will take right choices. You won't be foolish yourself knowing that one, what you're going to do with your finances, with your health, with your life, with your family, won't affect the will of God on earth and won't harm yourself in a long term. God created us to do His will. Ephesus chapter 1, 11 says, In Him we are also chosen, having been predestinated according to the plans of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will. So He created us to, to be in this war according to His plan to live in, in harmony according to our plans. So our plans, our will, our desires, what we want in earth, have to be in harmony with God's plan. That's the way that He created us. Also, He says in Revelation, the Holy Spirit said to John in Revelation 4, 11, You are worthy, O Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you create all things. You create all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. So by the will of God, we are here. That's why we are more than conquerors. Why? Because we are victorious from the very moment that we were created. You won't be here if God doesn't allow you to be here. Imagine, you can, I don't know, you can ask your parents and say, Mom, Dad, before I was conceived, before my mother get pregnant or you, were, you get pregnant, Mom, do you have any idea how I will going to be, how I going to be born? And imagine, according to biology, that we know that only one spermatozoid of a man have the right to enter into the woman's seed to have this procreation of a humankind. And how many spermatozoids are there in the, in the conception? There are thousands, I don't know if there are millions, but thousands of thousands of spermatozoids trying to go into that oval of this woman to create a human being. So you are the winners already. You already won this race. You already are the, the first one prize winner in this creation of your own life. And God allowed you to win. He helped you to win. Probably you were competing with other spermatozoids and you're kicking it on the way just to get into the, your mother's womb. Right? So you are more than conquerors. You are more than winner. John chapter 6 verse 38 says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, says Jesus, but to do the will of him who sent me. So if God allowed you to be here in this war, he wants you to do his will. Like Jesus. Jesus was sent to do the Father's will. Now, do you want to do the Father's will? If you want to do the Father's will, you must know that, yes, God wants you to be with Him forever. God doesn't create you for you to be abundant, orphaned, isolated, or be someone around the world wandering and wandering without any purpose. God creates you to be with Him forever. 1 John 2.17 says, The war and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God live forever. The man who does the will of God lives forever. And what it means to live forever is to spend eternity with God forever. Matthew 7.21 says, No, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, we enter in the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So live forever means to be in the kingdom of God forever. To enter in the kingdom of God forever. So God's will is for you to be with Him forever. Amen? And forever, it means forever. It's for all eternity. And God created you for that. But there is a problem. There is a problem. And that problem is called it sin. And because of sin, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. So in order to do that, God have, had a plan. And He had a plan to adopt you. To make you member of his family. 
So this is God's will. God's will is that you become a member of his family. According to Matthew chapter 12, 50, the Bible says, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother, says the Lord Jesus. So those who do God's will will enter in the family of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, once again, the Apostle Paul says in verse 5 to the church of Ephesus, He predestinated us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Pleasure and will. So God had a plan for you to be part of his family. But once again, we have the problem of sin. How God will resolve this problem? How God will make us all who were orphans, wandering in this world, separated from God for, because of sin, enter into his kingdom, be part of his family, and spend with him forever together. Well, this is the first point of my teaching from this week. God's will is for you to be saved. This is God's will. And you take notes with this because we're going to continue every week with this series. The first will of God is for you to be saved. Because if you are not saved, you cannot call yourselves a child of God, a son or daughter of God. You cannot be with God forever. You will be separated from God and you will never going to be in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. So God's will for you is to be saved. God wants us to save us, no, from our bodies or disease or our circumstances in our life here in planet Earth, but save us from all eternity for this separation that we have because of sin. And God cannot give you the rest that you need for this year 2018 if he don't first save you. So life comes from heaven to earth. And God wants to give you life first spiritually that you can spend eternity in heaven, the spiritual reign of God. It's hard to believe, but it's what this faith that we will overcome the world. Because without believing that God have a plan to save us, we will be just losers in this world. John chapter 6, 39 says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. Jesus was talking to, to his disciples that, yes, God gave everyone who believed in him to have a chance to go into heaven. In verse 14, he continues to say, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the song and believe in him shall have eternal life and will raise him up at the last day. If you believe this, you are more than conquerors because you want to conquer not only this present life, but you will conquer also death. There are two kinds of deaths that we have to face. One is physical, and the second is spiritually. If you believe in Jesus, you will conquer the physical death, and you will spend eternity in heaven. But if you don't believe in Jesus, and He who can resurrect you from the dead, then you will die the first death that is physically, and you will die the second one that is spiritually, when Jesus come again to earth to judge the living and the dead. And there will be no more chances for repentance and for believing in the Lord Jesus. In, Gal Gal in Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, the Apostle Paul said, Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. There were a problem. What is the problem? Sin. What is the solution? Jesus, the Savior of the world, who came to rescue us from our evil life, from our sinful life, from the present evil age. According to what? According to the will of God. So God gave himself his only one son for us to be rescued, to resolve the problem between God and us. Sin that divides us from the presence of God, the family of God, and the eternity together with God. From this week, we're going to start the Lent in whole Christianity. And these are the verses that we always meditate during the Lent time. Isaiah 53 says in verse 10, Yet it was the Lord's will, it was the Lord's will, to crush him, talking about Jesus, and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offering and prolong his day, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. To whom the prophet Isaiah is talking about? He's talking about Jesus, the faithful servant of God, who came as a ransom sacrifice for all of us.
to be saved. Now Jesus is the Lamb of God who take our place on the cross. He was crushed and he was cursed on the cross for our benefit. So we, until today, we have no guilty in front of God because Jesus took our guilt on the cross and he gave his life as a sacrifice instead of our life. So we can be saved physically and also spiritually. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said, My food, it is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So Jesus had also the heart to do the will of God. And this is calling like his food. Jesus was talking about the physical food that we need, but the spiritual food to nutrient his soul by winning will, souls, by winning people to God. And that's how he feels satisfied. It. Also, in Matthew 18, 14, Jesus says, In the same way your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. So through us, the call the disciple of Jesus, follower of Jesus, we are fulfilling God's will and giving to God the joy of heaven by bringing more people to Christ, more people to be saved. To finish this message, this week people are remember the tradition of Valentine. But Jesus is the real Valentine for all Christians. This opportunity of Valentine we have to share the eternal love of Jesus to us. You may use this excuse to approach someone that you know and share not only chocolates, but share the love of God. Because Jesus said in the words of the Spirit, I have loved you with an everlasting love. If you want to spell love, you can spell love with Valentine across. Because Valentine across will remind us about the love of God, as you can read together with me in the King James Version, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And now you can see in the middle of this across the word Valentine. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so good to us that he wants us all to be in love with him to experience His love for all eternity. This is a gift, the gift of God. He just gave His one and only Son. That's the most precious gift that every Valentine you can ever receive. In London, there's a cafe called it, uh, Redensos. And here in London, there's a story that the owner was sharing. And I was reading this article, say that London's cafe Redensos has nice lighting, comfortable coaches, and the smell of coffee in the ears. I love coffee, so I like this article. What it, was, what it doesn't have are prices, says the article. Originally started as a business by a local church. The cafe was transformed a year after it started. The manager, the manager felt that God was calling them to do something radical. Make everything on the menu free. That's radical. Today you can order coffee, cake, or sandwich without cost, says the owner. There isn't even a donation, Jer. It's all a gift. As one person asked the manager, why you are so generous? The replies was this. We are just trying to treat people the way God treats us. He says. Then he continued, God gave, gave us to us whether we thinking or not. He is generous to us beyond our imagination. Jesus died to rescue us from our sins and reconcile us with God. Amen. And he rose from the, gay, from the grave and he is alive now. Amen. And because of this, every wrong thing that we have done are forgiven. And we can have a new life today in him. So, one of the most amazing things about this is the free gift of love of God. And we can buy, we cannot buy the new life that Jesus offers, and we cannot even donate toward his cause. It's all a gift. It's all free. And as the folks in this cafe Redenburg serve their cakes and coffee, they give people the cleanse of God's generosity. 
you and I are offering eter eternal life for free because Jesus paid the price in full for all of us. So, the Bible says that, yes, we are saved, and that's God's will. But you won't feel like saved today. We are still are not yet in heaven. So there, in order to just finish and conclude this, there's a theology that's called it already, but not yet. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out of your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God's will is for you to will and to act according to his purpose. And the purpose of God is for you to be saved. So what we have to do? We have to war for our salvation. And how does this mean? It means that we have to gain salvation by doing something? No, it's a gift. But we have to keep this gift entire, pure, as it was given to us. But we have free will. We can destroy this gift. We can step on this gift. We can spit on this gift. Or we can ignore this gift. That would be very immature. If you give a child a Christmas gift, you know that at the end of January, this gift is forgiven. Why? Because they are children. They're easy for God. It doesn't matter how much you pay for this gift of Christmas or birthday gift, the next month is already on the corner. Why? Because they think that this gift is for granted. And then we have another gift the next Christmas or the next birthday. If we think like that, we are very immature and baby Christians. But we want to be mature Christians. We, want, we must keep our salvation intact. How? I will teach you the next week how. But by being like Jesus, holy, and doing His will on earth as it is in heaven. So salvation is, like I put in this picture here, like a race. You receive this starting star with Jesus' salvation, the author and finisher of your race of faith. So give, Jesus give you salvation, and that's your starting line. But when you get to heaven, your salvation will be complete, and you get to the end of life. So what do you have to do? Do something to obtain salvation? No, you just have to run this marathon of faith until you get to the finish line. And there you will spend time with Jesus forever. Why do we have to do that? Because it's worthy the, the price. It's worthy the end. People don't run a marathon, don't run a race, just for nothing. They want to run for getting to the end. How can I illustrate this? You have vacation and these people are traveling this week because of holidays. And you probably may plan to arrive to a, any distant location by car, airplane, or whatever transportation you try to take this week. And you will know, you will know that the time will be great when you get there. But on the way, you have to see or face many traveling difficulties. Wondering about the journey that you're going to have, probably you have to think about car problems, traffic problems, traffic delays, getting lost, or six kids in, behind you, or irritable other travelers, like try to get to their destination. And even that your destination is great, doesn't mean that the journey will be great too. But this street was anything but, could be anything but smooth. But you have to keep pressing on it because you know that it would be worth for the trouble. If you know that heaven is everything that we're going to get, and if you know that heaven and salvation will be the most wonderful time and place that we're going to spend in eternity, it's worth the journey of faith that we have here on earth. It doesn't, we'll be like you, we just can receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior today and die tonight. But God still wants us to work on this salvation by sharing this love from God to others. By bringing more people to Christ, that they may face Jesus with joy, mercy, and love as we have seen every day of our life. So are you ready to, jo to take the journey? Are you ready to walk with Jesus? Are you ready to run for Jesus? And you're ready to go to your destiny, that is heaven. So remember these words as you're traveling and visit your relatives this week and share the love of God. Using this excuse of Valentine, take a bus of, 
of chocolate and share the love of God in Jesus' name. Amen.